Hi gorgeous, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ara and I'm gonna be doing a little mini review of the new Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Bronzer. I picked mine up in the shade 90 in the Natasha Denona High Gen Skin Care Infused Glow Beautifier. And I'm gonna see if these are worth all the hype that they have been getting. I'm gonna to try to do my face makeup the way that Natasha Denona has recommended you using this. She did a few different videos uploaded to YouTube on how she likes to use it. If she's doing it for a no makeup makeup look, she used this underneath the entire beautifier. So then I'm gonna give that a try on half of my face and see how that goes. My eyes are already finished. I used Carla Cosmetics in my Huda Beauty, what is it, Rose Glow palette. I just was trying to be creative <laughs> and sometimes it works today it did feels nice I'm gonna use a dense brush to just rub this all over I do have a little bit of the glitter fallout on my face from my eyes but I wiped off most of it I don't really care too much that's not a big deal ew no not my eyebrows <laughs> don't want that I'm gonna have the details of this beautifier on the screen for you, as well as the price. I have used this before. It didn't go so well when I was trying to film it. I did wanna mention, I picked up the lightest shade. The compact is magnetic. It actually feels really nice in the hands. It doesn't have like a little wedge here for you to put your fingers, so I do have a little bit of difficulty trying to open it. I'm not sure anyone has mentioned that before. It could just be me. There is 10 grams of product in here. I, there is coconut, so if you are sensitive to coconut, be mindful, this might cause you irritation. So what I'm gonna do for half of my face is put this all over, just like she used it on this side, and then I'm not gonna do that on the right side of my face, just to kinda see how that would work. I'm not too, oh, I am making a mess. Don't. Do that don't be too rough with your brush I don't want to use my fingers I I'm not too avid on putting my hands on my face even if they're clean but be mindful that your brush might also make a mess like mine did that's okay Ooh, interesting it feels like a little squishy putty like I'm getting my fingers indented in it the oh, may as well just stick it on my face I don't normally put a highlighter all over my face, but I'm really intrigued by this. And normally I would put on a skin tint if I were gonna do this, because I like to do more of a luminous base under a skin tint. She has shown that she puts the serum in the highlighter itself. I will not do that, absolutely not. I don't mind experimenting for like the sake of science. If she wants to send me a free one, that'd be great. Then I'd experiment. But no, that's not gonna happen. I don't trust it, so I'm not gonna waste my money. But you do you. If you wanna give it a try, let me know how it goes. I'm gonna quickly color correct. I do not have a lot of texture on my face. I mean, I do have some, but I don't have a whole lot. So I'm not too concerned about anything being exacerbated with this makeup. I'm gonna speed through my base. This is my Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Glow Foundation. I have mine in the shade 1C105. And then I will update you guys as I go along. I don't normally do my eyes before my base, however, I did feel like doing that today and I thought I could be a little more haphazard with my makeup and use glitter and it turned out pretty stinking nice. I'm always open to trying new techniques. I know a lot of makeup artists will do eyeshadow first. I just feel more comfortable doing my base first but it is pretty easy to do your eyes when you're not worried about getting it all over your face. And I chose this foundation because it's more of a luminous foundation, and I'm kind of going with that luminous theme. Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer, shade R2. You already know I'm a big fan. 
one of my favorite concealers of all time. Very full coverage though. I have not powdered yet. I've only put on my foundation and my concealer. I'm gonna powder underneath my eyes and around my forehead. I'm gonna try to leave it alone as much as possible for the perimeter of my face. I don't see too much of a difference just yet because I put this serum all over my face. I can tell my whole face looks luminous even with the luminous foundation, which I love. But, I don't know, you guys have to tell me, does this look more luminous with that beautifier underneath than this side? I really can't see too much of a difference at this point. I'm not sure it really translates with the foundation, probably more so with the skin tint. I will have to give that a try. But I will say this, I like how my skin looks. I'm just over here making a mess. I'm gonna take my Dior Lavender Powder. I'm gonna put this underneath my eyes for the time being. Well, I was just gonna put it under my eyes, but I guess I got a little carried away. I'm just gonna go ahead and dust a little bit of this all over my frowny lines. Won't be too big of a deal, okay. That's better. Makes me feel a little more confident. Go ahead and contour and get this out of the way because I'm going to anyway. I'm gonna skip blush and bronzer for right now and I'm gonna go in just with this highlighter. I'm gonna start with that so I can kind of get a better idea of how this will look. I wouldn't ordinarily use a brush like this for a highlight, but I'm going to give it a try for today because I have seen her use a denser brush to kind of pack on the highlight. I'm not really seeing anything. I, I I, don't see much. This is a Sigma Skin Perfector F67. I'm gonna pick it up on the side of the brush here. Maybe this will work better. Could just be user error. I'm not overly fond of a putty texture. I liked more jelly. Wait, no. <laughs> I like more baked formulas. That is really, really pretty though. Okay, now I can kind of see it better on this side of my face. Since I don't have it down here and I don't have it underneath my foundation here, but I do have it underneath the foundation here. I'm gonna try that on the right side of my face this time, just to kind of see if there really is a difference with using this underneath foundation. And I'm not doing much of a swiping motion. I'm, I'm doing more of a pat, a gentle pat and sweep. I feel like I can build it up. I don't have difficulty building it up. I'm not sure I would actually use it that way. I don't I don't typically use a highlighter like this. Sometimes I'll put my highlighter under my blush because I like that. This just isn't my cup of tea. Ooh, this is probably not the best thing I should have done. You guys have to tell me if you can see any difference here. Foundation and serum only. Foundation, serum, and beautifier. I do kind of feel like I can see a little bit more luminosity on the left side of my face with the beautifier under my foundation. Like I mentioned, I really think having it with a skin tint will look better, but I can see a little bit of extra luminosity the shade works for me. I am very fair. This is a very flattering shade. I don't think if you're my skin tone or lighter that you'd have to worry too much about that. It does look skin-like in that effect. I don't know if I would wear it under a foundation. It really doesn't add enough to make me wanna do that. I went ahead and finished off my eyes with some lashes and put on a different color lipstick because I wanna be vibrant. I have used this bronzer before. This is the new Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Bronzer. It is 18 grams of product with a 24 month shelf life. This thing is enormous. And when you look at it, there is shimmer in the product. Now, what I originally thought when I was looking at this product the first time was I'm gonna have all this shimmer all over my face. But when I used it, there were no shimmer particles on my face that I could see. I looked up close, I did everything I could. 
And honestly, it just went on so luminous and so airbrushed looking that I couldn't really tell to begin with. And if you're that close and you could see shimmer, back off. <laughs> But this thing is massive. It is very heavy. The packaging is incredibly gorgeous and sturdy. With my little pink finger for my lipstick, sorry. As of today, April 11th, I got mine off of Nordstrom. All four shades are available on Nordstrom. When I first purchased it, the deepest shade was not available. I picked mine up in the shade 90. I can't see anything as far as ingredients go about coconut oil. I don't think there's coconut derivatives in here. I could be wrong. If you're sensitive to coconuts, double check. A glowy bronzer formula that delivers an instant Italian summer glow. <laughs> Formulated with micronized pigments that help blur and smooth the appearance of texture. It's an ultra creamy powder that melts into skin seamlessly and stays in place for up to 24 hours. Okay, no, I'm not going down that road. I don't care, I'm not. I'm gonna start off with a Sephora 50 brush. I just love this brush and start off on the left side of my face here that has the Natasha Denona Beautifier all over. This is a more neutral powder. I would say leaning, like golden undertone, leaning warmer. It's described as neutral, but it doesn't really look neutral on my skin. It definitely looks quite a bit more warm. I do think that the powder itself is very luminous despite me having all of this serum underneath and i remember the first time i wore it it looked airbrushed and it still does don't get me wrong i love a beautiful luminous bronzer but for summer warmer months i like more matte cool leaning bronzers for the winter this is going to be perfect for summer my only caveat is it is limited edition or described as limited edition on nordstrom I don't understand it. I don't think it's necessary. I just wish that Armani would keep this permanent because this is an amazing formula. This is the side that doesn't have the beautifier underneath my foundation and it just looks so airbrushed and glowy. I can't see shimmer particles. I can see the beautifier. It looks amazing, but I think this is absolutely stunning and I wish it were not limited edition. I wish also that this were more than four shades. I really think that it's not inclusive. That is disappointing. Ooh, I've been a little heavy handed with it. I'm gonna have to buff it down because I'm definitely not deep enough for this. Before I buff it down though, you can see on my forehead especially just how luminous this bronzer really is. This makes me want to get the RMS bronzer and compare them, which I was going to get it anyway, but I love a luminous bronzer for warmer months and I really want to see how it holds up against the RMS. But you can definitely see in my forehead just how luminous it really is. I'm gonna use my Hourglass Ethereal Light and just kind of buff it down. I definitely don't need to be awkwardly bronzed. So I have both bronzers here in front of me. I've got the Armani, I've got the Dior. This is the limited edition Dior Forever Bronze Glow in the shade 32 Pink Bronze. This one here is eight grams. 8 grams for $55 versus 18 grams for $58. Oh, open please. <laughs> I'm trying not to blind you, but this one is honestly more luminous than this one. This one didn't have the same type of luminosity that this one has. It's a little more flat matte with a bit of a sheen to it. It's, I mean, the packaging is just as beautiful. I think there's something to take away from both of these, but you're getting far more but you're getting far more product in the Armani bronzer than you are the Dior bronzer. Um, and for cost, that's something to consider because they're both limited edition. This one from Dior is 12 months shelf life. This one is the 24 and they're both made in France. So it's, it really just depends on what you want. I can't see shimmer particles. All I can see is a healthy luminous shine. But take that with a grain of salt because 
I do have that serum underneath. So I am gonna have to do a different video comparing these two because these are gorgeous, but they're limited edition. I don't know how long they're gonna stay in stock for, but if I could only choose one and pick one to have, it would be this one, just the Armani. I have used both of these more than once already. And I like the Dior, I really do, but it's not that unique compared to the other Dior bronzers I have. This one is, I don't have a powder Armani bronzer, but it's luminous and there aren't a lot of great luminous bronzer formulas, whereas this one is great. I would consider this top tier. I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini review of the Natasha Denona Beautifier and the Armani bronzer. There is a slight fragrance in this. It's pleasing. It smells like the serum. I just, I don't think it's necessary, but if you're sensitive, this does have fragrance, so bear that in mind. I did forget to mention there is 10 grams of product in here with a 12 month shelf life and it is made in Italy. Thank you for sticking around to this point. If you enjoyed yourself, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content because sometimes I like to moonlight as a makeup artist even though I'm just a novice. And if that's you, we have something in common. And if you have stuck around to this point and you're curious what I did for my eyes, just so you know, it is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. All I did was use the lightest shade here, this mauve shade here, the deep shade here, and this taupey shade. And then I finished it off with a Carla Cosmetics Opal Loose Chrome in Bougie Bay. Everything on my face will be listed down below. If you click on those links, they are affiliated. So thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you. Do something for yourself today because you are worth it.